Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. During this short application exercise, we're going to examine some hypothetical troubleshooting scenarios using the magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks we created in a prior applications exercise. Before we begin, realize the first step to troubleshooting any system is to understand how it is intended to operate. Anyone that tells you anything different is wrong. This lecture therefore operates under the presumption you've watched the preceding lectures detailing the principle of operation and construction of the magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks. Keep in mind there is no limit to the wrong that can happen. Problems manifest themselves in many numbers and in many forms and sometimes the same external system can be routed in very different sources. This being said, I'd like to discuss and intentionally induce some faults in this circuit for the purposes of familiarizing you with the observed results. If at a later date you observe these same fault conditions, you'll at least have the luxury of having seen it once before. Recall our magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks implemented in the above reference lecture exhibits the following behavior. When our operator presses and releases the forward push button, the left contactor physically closes and the motor rotates in one direction. While in forward mode, the closure of the reverse push button serves no purpose since the electrical interlock provided by the contact F2 does not allow the reversing contactor coil to be energized. When our operator presses and releases stop, the forward contactor physically opens and the motor free spins to a halt. When an operator presses and releases the reverse button, the right contactor physically closes and the motor rotates in the opposite direction. While in reverse mode, the closure of the forward push button serves no purpose since the electrical interlock provided by the contact R2 does not allow the forward contactor coil to be energized. When an operator presses and releases stop, the reversing contactor physically opens and the motor free spins to a halt. Finally, when in either mode, the e-stop serves to not only de-energize the motor, but also disable both the forward and reverse push button until it is reset. You should realize that this circuit exhibits certain expected behaviors that although potentially undesirable are not to be considered troubleshooting events, but are rather byproducts of the as constructed nature of this circuit. A technician knowledgeable of basic technical principles and this circuit's intended function can predict this behavior and take the necessary precautions. For example, Consider the response of this system to a sudden loss and restoration of power, or an overload event. Note that this magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks exhibits low or no voltage protection characteristics, and that if power is lost and restored, the system will not immediately restart until an operator makes the conscious decision to do so. Consider what happens when the system is placed in forward or reverse mode, the main circuit breaker opens simulating a loss of primary and pilot power to the whole system. As predicted, the motor free spins to a halt. When power is restored to the whole system, the motor does not immediately return to the previous mode since the holding circuit is dropped out. An operator must therefore actively press the forward or reverse button to return the motor to the desired mode. Low or no voltage protection circuits like this one are commonly employed in scenarios where an operator may be injured or an industrial process damaged by the unexpected restart of a motor. Let's now consider this magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks' response to an overload event caused either by a large mechanical load, a locked rotor, or a single phasing event. Consider what would happen if the motor is overloaded in the forward direction and the overload is in automatic reset mode. In this case, I'm simulating an overload event by pushing the manual test button. The triggered overload element signals the forward contactor to open as expected. When the overload element in automatic mode cools and resets, i.e. when I stop triggering it, the system does not immediately return to the forward mode since the holding circuit is dropped out. Only when an operator makes a conscious decision to do so by actively pressing and releasing forward would it do so. The same overload contact functions identically in reverse mode. In this case, I'm simulating an overload event by pushing in the manual test button. The triggered overload element signals the reversing contactor to open as expected. When the overload element in automatic mode cools and resets, i.e. when I stop triggering it, the system does not immediately return to the reverse mode since the holding circuit is dropped out. Only when an operator makes a conscious decision to do so by actively pressing and releasing reverse would it do so. A single overload therefore serves to de-energize the motor in either direction. Only when the overload has cooled and been reset 
either automatically or manually, will the system return to service. Again, this overload is trip-free, meaning it cannot be held closed while still hot. Let's examine some additional hypothetical troubleshooting scenarios and discuss how the system responds positively or negatively to these situations. As convenient as the pre-configured reversing wire kit makes pairing reversing contactors, they are not without their problems. Very often, technicians in a rush to assemble a system may fail to read the manufacturer data sheets and improperly install them. For this reason, the mechanical interlock serves such a vital purpose. Even if your ladder logic is a tangled, looping mess of nonsense, even the worst case scenario, that being the simultaneous assertion of both the forward and reversing contactor coils, the mechanical interlock prevents the simultaneous movement of both contact carriers. Additionally, I've observed undisciplined lab groups fail to tighten all the terminals of the pre-configured reversing wire kit. Although physically inserted into the correct terminals, no electrical contact is made and the system will not function as intended. Good work practices dictate you properly confirm, inspect, and secure wires and tighten them to the manufacturer recommended torque specifications. Very often, a system passing a superfluous visual inspection may necessitate invasive instrumentation inspection to find the particular terminal not making contact. Again, wire numbers are more properly thought of as nodes. You'll note wire 7, the pooled connection of the A2 contactor coil terminals, and the 9.5 terminal of the normally closed overload contact should have the same voltage with respect to some other reference. If you observe a different voltage at the A2 terminal of the reversing contactor coil, the A2 terminal of the reversing contactor coil is quite simply not connected to wire 9. A visual inspection of the A2 terminal might find that this screw simply has not been tightened down enough and the pre-configured reversing wire kit is just floating around not making electrical contact. While convenient and time-saving, these kits seem to only accentuate the innately lazy tendencies of your lab partner. You might think you're throwing them an easy bone when you toss them this simple kit and tell them to install it, but rest assured they will drop this ball the moment you're not looking. By all means, check each other's work, confirm, inspect, and get it right the first time. Let's examine the nature of the interlocks and discuss their implications. Warning, do not try this at home. For obvious reasons, I am not going to simultaneously close both the forward and reverse contactor. I am, however, going to remove one level of protection, notably the electrical interlocks. Here I've purposely bypassed the R2 and F2 electrical interlocks with a short length of wire. I've effectively removed these electrical interlocks from consideration and created a magnetic reversing motor starter only a mechanical interlock between the paired contactors. When the system is placed in forward mode, the forward contactor closes as expected. Note, however, when I press reverse, the reversing contactor coil is energized because no electrical interlock prevents this from happening. However, the mechanical interlock prevents the reversing contact carrier from moving. This sound is a dead giveaway that something stupid is about to go down and the mechanical interlock is doing its best to keep it from happening. Here's a close-up of the same phenomenon. Note the energized reversing contactor coil has essentially lost a game of musical chairs because the forward contact carrier took the only available seat. This does not, however, prevent the reversing contact carrier from repeatedly trying to ram itself into place. While in this energized and unsealed in state, the reversing contactor coil continues to experience high inrush current if an unusually headstrong operator or a persistent automatic input continued to energize the reversing contactor coil, you might expect this particular coil to burn out. A burned out reversing contactor coil would ordinarily open and exhibit an extremely high resistance. A visual inspection of the coil might show blackened, heat-damaged exterior. While a magnetic reversing motor starter with only a mechanical interlock does prevent simultaneous closure of both contactors, it does so at the risk of potentially damaging the contactor coils. For this reason, magnetic reversing motor starters with both electrical and mechanical interlocks are preferred. Alright, that's about it. 
Again, keep in mind there is no limit to the wrong that can happen. My intention in creating this simple resource was to introduce and familiarize you with a couple common troubleshooting scenarios you can put in your pocket and whip out at a later date. Remember, troubleshooting is not a skill separate from a thorough understanding of basic tactical principles, but rather troubleshooting is the systematic and efficient application of basic tactical principles. The first step to troubleshooting any system, no matter how complicated, is to understand how it is intended to operate in the first place. Anyone that tells you anything different is wrong. In conclusion, we examined some hypothetical troubleshooting scenarios for magnetic reversing motor starters with electrical and mechanical interlocks. We examined this circuit's response to loss and restoration of power, response to overload events in either mode, improperly wired circuits, and the utility of electrical interlocks. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.